any of you follow his attention? Yeah. Cubs, are you ready? I am. It'll be dark again. Okay. Um, yeah, energy follows attention. So I take that to mean that we lead with our attention, that we <clears throat> uh, to me that's that talks about staying focused. Say that last one again, Eloy. Staying focused. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's interesting. I I, um, it seems to me to suggest something maybe similar, like energy will follow the attention or what we put our attention on. That's where energy goes. Um, but I also, I would have actually thought it might be reversed. Like follow the energy, listen for the energy and put attention there. Um, yeah, that's what it brought up for what me. What strikes me if we're looking at this, energy in one sense has my attention as um, freedom like spacious possibility and attention has my attention as form like attention focus like it the tension itself is a binding of energy in the sense that like a stone on the desk is a binding of energy versus cosmic radiation or something, for example. I was gonna ask you, Eli, when you said, when you tied it to focus, would you say more about that? And is that an implicit move or how are you experiencing that? Um, so that the attention is kind of the container for the energy. And if, if my, if my, Focus is outside of the group or the or the conversation that it's going to leak energy from the from the process. If your um, focus is outside the what? Say again. Outside the group or outside the conversation. Like if I'm if I'm thinking out here while all this is going on over here, um, I'm going to be taking energy away from the process. I'm going to be, like I said, leaking leaking energy. Yeah, it's. That, that was really, the first thing you said there really spoke, felt like it put into better words what I was trying to say, of attention as the container. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we construct our attention with the intention of bringing energy into something, So you're seeing it as a two-way relationship. The energy um, impacts the attention and the attention impacts the energy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really, <clears throat> yeah, I, I feel them both to be, I, I guess one feels more like a 
kind of a law, like a natural thing, like energy will go where our attention is. So if I'm doing something else, there is a certain amount of energy that's going in that direction that's not staying right here. That kind of feels like a law, like just, you know, physics or something. Um, and the other way that I was seeing it feels more to me like the invitation of theory you, like listen for a particular, like pay attention to a certain kind of energy. I don't know if that's really truly what it's proposing, but I guess that reminds me a little bit more of what we did in GTC and maybe that's what I'm, think I'm hearing here. Um, no, I, I would, I, like that? I, yeah. think you're, I think you're really honest. I mean, the, as we do the case clinic process, You know, we notice where is the energy in my body, right? Where is the energy in my perception? Is it in thought forms? Is it in gestures? Is it in feelings? And then we bring attention to the energy. Mm -hmm. And it's out of that that the value flows. A friend of mine is now I think a Catholic divinity priest or something like that who was once a CEO of Chrysler or something like that and also um, one of Terry O'Fallon's cohort members in her CIIS PhD program used to just say you know go where the energy is put your in other words translation for me is put your attention on the energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also know that in my own spiritual practice recently, if I'm looking at my own mind, I see that my mind is all over the place. And so, so is my energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can see that if I can practice a disciplined focus that will allow me to hold my attention in one place, then I can refine the energy in my mind, or refine the clarity in this case. The energy stops being like noise and starts mm -hmm. being more transparent, more smooth. I don't know if that, I felt something there. It was real. I don't know if I put it into words or not. And I, I think it would also mean like paying attention to the responses of the other, of the, the, our little constellation here of, you know, like mm -hmm. we've got the five of us and it feels like Kevin needs to say something to, to call that out, like instead of just, you know. mm. Yeah, and that, just as we sink a little bit more into this, it, I'm coming back to, um, and may, Kabir, I think maybe you said this, like the listening that we're doing is getting underneath the words that are being said, right? Like we're sensing into our, our the field of our own body, the field around us, and noticing more than just what someone is saying with words and that to me has a bit more of an energetic feel yeah by doing that we don't get caught or distracted in the words and bound up following the karma but we actually pay attention to making sure that the energy is moving robustly in the whole body of the collective yeah. with the recognition that it's not out of the best words, but actually out of the vitality of the body that we're going to get the best results or the most desired results from the process. Yeah. 
I really see David's omnidirectional care awareness here in this about, mm. you know, if we can allow our attention to take in more and more, then more and more can be energized and not atrophy. Yeah. And so there's our individual energy and our collective energy. Mm -hmm. And the same thing holds, right? You know, go to the gym with the guy that only works out his biceps. I'm not following that one. Well, just, I mean, like, in the same way that, that, that you know, somebody might not have energy, healthy, robust energy in their whole body. Oh, I see. Okay. You can exercise, but if you're not allowing your attention to really flow into the whole being, mm -hmm. you're going to have energy in part of it, but the other part's going to get left behind. It's going to like, take the political system right now. You know, we mm -hmm. we put our attention, so much of us, and so much energy on progressive approach, and we've taken energy out of. And attention by taking attention out of you know a huge swath of the population and have created a real condition of suffering and crisis as a result I feel good about that one. Anything else? Number two? Yep, we can hit that one. Oh, before we go to number two, just on the topic of attention, um, my dad might be stopping by or calling to drop some stuff off. So just in case. Can I move that, some energy in that direction? <laughs> we might for a, for a brief while. You know, I'm, I'm on phone meetings today, so I, I warned you. But um, yeah, so number two. Cabs, you want to read that one? Sure. We have to go through a process that deals with the three main movements or inner gestures. Observe, observe, observe. Retreat and reflection. Sorry, number one, observe, observe, observe. Number two, retreat, retreat and reflection. Allow the inner knowing to emerge. Number three, act in an instant. Hmm. Yeah, the one I'm most curious about is on number two, the retreat part. What has your curiosity about it? Uh, oh, it's got a richness to it, like um, there's a couple parts to it. So, you know, retreat can mean run away, or <laughs> uh, it can mean take take pause, take. Takes some time, or it could, uh, it could even mean like surrender, uh, or a form of surrendering. Like it's just it's just a loaded uh, a loaded word for me. I'm trying to uh, maybe it's just like just take the step back. I noticed when you said surrender. I was looking at the words, allow the inner knowing to emerge. And there's like a surrender of control. 
mm -hmm. or a surrender of the intellect that can allow knowing to come from some place that are here referred to as inner. Like reflection is the word I use a lot, but retreat yeah. is just, you know, not one of my, not one that comes up for me. Just as we pause on that word, it, it's interesting to notice that like there's retreat literally like back up and then there's like the retreat that we go on to practice meditation or to restore or uh, uh -huh. pause, you know, so it seems like there's a few meanings, like you're saying, there's a lot kind of wrapped up in that word. Mm -hmm. And I, I, yeah, and I want to get to the, to the, um, Number four. Uh, no, no, I just want to get to the effective part of that retreat, you know, the part that works for the process. You know, mm -hmm. I just think of how it comes up for me in my own life. That retreat, I do a lot. Yeah. In conversation, in, in, God, you probably have experienced me to say, like, can you just stop for a minute so I can? <laughs> yes. And I really do. I just, I really like, I really retreat from the grasping motion of my own apprehension and try and let go of like i'm really retreating from a part of my own habitual mind to mm -hmm. work too quickly with information and try and just stop and let the information wash over me for a bit Yeah, I, those three minutes of silence um, in our case clinics come to mind as well. That seems like the place where we allow for that pause that you, you take a lot during conversation camps. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm also hung up on that, like the re retreat, like as if we were going on retreat and it seems like a quality of that is often quieting the habitual, right? We go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. We often spend more time in silence on certain retreats or, but we're just out of our habitual. That seems like an important component. Yeah, habitual to me sounds like identity over time, right? What over time? Identity over time. Oh, I heard againity, like again. <laughs> identity. <laughs> Which is kind of the same thing as an identity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really identified with this right now. <laughs> My identity is threatened right now. I am. <laughs> What's identity? Oh. Yeah, like, um, I know what's really got me a lot right now is trying to be impacted and open by our current, current socio-political context in a way that produces a generous or generative response. And in that, this idea of trying to disconnect from a, an ever-seeking progress in order to learn to practice a greater or more, a fuller integration. feels like that breaking the line of identity or retreating from the habitual is a necessary step to create 
opening for integration. Besides, like, like, there's not a porousness mm -hmm. in habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My favorite is act in an instant. No <laughs> way. <laughs> Can I just say something, the one more thing about number two and number one, I guess. Um, it just strikes me that like, you know, we take that those three minutes in the case clinic and then we each have a turn. And that right there is the practice of those three things, right? Um, and it, I just, like it's it's um interesting to me how like then we move into a generative dialogue where we've got more back and forth and the challenge in continuing to observe and continuing to retreat and reflect as you know the pace kind of picks up and the structure loosens just a little bit um because I, I really, this is what I so want to learn to do well and take outside of the case clinics is, you know, to, to have this kind of listening, even in looser, you know, containers of dialogue. And um, it just feels in my body like that is a discipline for, for because it is not so habitual to do that. Um, at least with the kind of precision that I would, that I would love. It seems multi-layered and holonic. Like, you know, observe, observe, observe as well. We're listening to the case giver. And then the moments of silence to retreat and reflect and allow the inner knowing to emerge. And then the generative dialogue is the action in an instant. You know, mm. an instant is maybe larger than we might imagine it in a moment, right? Mm -hmm. But the but that the, these all of that can happen in each of those places, and then in each side of each of those places, and inside of each of those places, and so it really is, as you've described, a discipline. Well, what you just described sounded like a description of a, a fractal structure. Yeah, that's what I meant to. And like on one pole of that is habit and karma and form that is calcified and resistant to change, resistant to novelty and inflexible. And on the other side of it is energy that is so expansive as to be functionally completely dissipated. And there's a discipline in there of holding space for constant observation, constant retreat, constant action. No, it seems like we're um, <clears throat> we're actually practicing this now. I feel mm. like in just the sitting we're doing after we're talking, it feels like there's a bigger um, field. Mm. That makes sense. I, my awareness mm. feels broader and more expansive. <clears throat> sure. 
makes sense to me. Me too. Are we still on two? Me too. Two, pretty two, or two. two. Do you feel ready to go to three, Eloy and mm -hmm. Gabs? I'll ah. read this one and then and then uh, Eli can read number four. Yeah, actually I'll be going after number three. So do you want to do number four then, since it interested you? Yes. Let's do that one. But do we need to do three first to to get there? That was a yes to starting to stay longer. <laughs> I, that's a question. Well, let's do let's do three and see how we how we how long that takes. Okay. Well, the three stage process of observe, retreat, inner knowing, and act in an instant. Um, this process only works if we cultivate the inner instruments, open mind, open heart, and open will. I'm not remembering the open will part. Surrendering fear. Mm. I feel like I often go through an experience of these um, at during our case clinics, and it goes something like this: like someone starts to present their case, and I get aware of like just wanting to like relax my mind so that my thoughts and, and their words aren't like the loudest, you know, things and the only data that I'm, that I'm getting. So I feel like I try to relax like that thinking about or judging something or analyzing. And then <clears throat> That feels like it kind of melts a little bit. And then the heart thing feels like I just try to soften, like make my heart really open and available to what's there without judging either. So there's like a softening in my chest. And then I feel like as soon as the three minutes goes, I'm like thrust into open will. Like I want to have something to say and the fear of like, what if nothing comes or, or also the relief if like something already came when they were talking like, whew, okay. Like I've got something. To say. <laughs> but then again, trying to surrender, like what if I didn't have that? Like, just, can I just be nothing? Can I have nothing? And like it, for me is remarkably fearful to, to not gear up all those other places in my body to try to create something, an offering, and to just let it come or hope it comes. Um, anyway, that's how I experience those. What you're talking about, the makes me think of um, existential humility. Mm. Like whatever is the I that, that worries about having something to offer or to contribute. Is that in contrast, having that I, that identification is an existential, is an act of existential hubris, you know? from the view of like, this is all one, like, oh yes, I, so am I, I'm all one, you know, 
<laughs> versus the existential humility, which is like, okay, well, what will be in the next moment may or may not be me. And that, that, that to let go of that fundamental biological anxiety. Existential humility. It's, it feels like what it's this is, practice is really about. Like, can I let die the me that was just here? <laughs> <laughs> just I had a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> To give room for something else that might want to come through. And to me, this like, and it's coming through, whether I fear it or, uh, you know, condemn it or judge it. What's mm -hmm. a Judgment, cynicism, and fear. So, yeah. But how do I allow myself to be an open space where the energy can flow fully and vitally into the next moment as a part of this collective being? It seems like a dance between <clears throat> like dropping the ego but then having the, the presence to call it forth when it needs calling. Like I, I, I don't, I'm not I'm not sure what I'm saying here, but so there's a there's a dual role, the, the ego needs to step aside and then it needs to be there to, to respond. So, does that make that sense? Act in an instant comes up. Like I have to, yeah, like, accident, there you go. Like I open myself, I retreat from the form of my identity of, of mm -hmm. the moment so that I can be reformed by something inner to me, inner beneath, underneath me. I open my will to something underneath me that can mm -hmm. act in an instant and reform into an identity and in theory then a more capable more adequate identity to this new moment mm -hmm. yeah so the me needs to step aside and then the me needs to come back into uh, and it's holonic it like breaks the idea of time pretty quickly mm -hmm. say that again Caps didn't i said it, it's holonic and, and it breaks the idea of time pretty quickly because mm. you know we talk we think about it, it goes away it comes back it goes away it comes back but yet it's always doing that at an iterative scale that to my attention breaks mm -hmm. the construct of time I really appreciate the way you described it, melting. Mm. Like I like, feel like I can let that metaphor just go from the open mind through the open heart and into the open will and just like just feel myself really become mm. like raw and available. And I, I I'm think I'm feeling like the going back to the number one that 
the open will is almost a, an unfocusing of attention in, in a sense. Like, so um, if, I want the, if I want the conversation to go a certain way, I'll focus my attention there. But mm -hmm. if I want to be open, then my attention would be more open. Like, We were talking about politics this morning, big surprise. And you know, the question at hand was like, how do we get people to step outside of themselves and into something larger? And it, that's like what I heard you describing there. Mm -hmm. If I open my will, I, I take the attention off of myself and I allow the attention to move past my own boundary. And, and to yeah. go from a focus to a broad uh, attention, I guess. That feels really impactful, Eloy. That that point that you're that, that you're making that like if we if energy follows attention, and I heard something while someone was delivering their case and I focus on that one thing or what it brought up in me and I just focus there like well I've got my thing mm -hmm. um, it's a more narrow perhaps invitation and so I love what you're saying about so then our attention goes open and we just rest there and now we've got this bigger field from which to receive and hear <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah, I think I better get going, even though the next one is of interest to me, so. I feel my attention going, so I better take my attention where it needs to go. Take it towards the energy, huh? <laughs> yeah. But thank you guys. This was great. Appreciate it. And I'll look forward to the recording. <laughs>